Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm now answering question <clears throat> number seven from the May June 2014 International A Level Cambridge 9709 Paper 1 Pure Mathematics. Okay, this question here, <clears throat> excuse me, I've got a bad throat today. Okay, um, is a question that is on one of my end of topic worksheets on straight line graphs. <clears throat> and this this is from the chapter on coordinate geometry. And this question here has been requested by one of my students for me to answer. So it says the coordinates of the points A and B are A2 and 3B respectively. So you have point A has the coordinates A2. And the point B has the coordinates 3 and B. <clears throat> the distance AB... So the length between the points A and B is the square root of 125 units and the gradient of AB, the gradient of AB is 2. Find the possible values of A and B. So what we're going to do is we're going to form two equations from these two bits of information that we're given. So if we look at the gradient first, which is probably the easier thing to do, we know that the gradient of a line is the change in y, so you can say yb minus ya over the change in x, which is xb minus xa. Okay, I've put in terms of these letters. It doesn't matter which way I do it. I could say y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. I could say, you know, ya minus yb over... So ya minus yb over xa minus xb. It doesn't matter. Okay, so I know from this I can say that the gradient 2 is equal to the change in the y coordinates which is b minus 2 over the change in the x coordinates which is 3 minus a okay it must start from the same place i can't say b minus 2 over a minus 3 if i do b minus 2 i must be 3 minus a okay now i can rearrange that i can multiply both sides by 3 minus a so i'm going to put 2 times 3 minus a equals b minus 2 so this it gives me one equation. I can just simplify a bit. 6 minus 2a equals b minus 2. So I can say here that um, if I add 2 to both sides, 8 minus 2a equals b. So I have one equation. b is equal to 8 minus 2a. So that's one equation I've got from the gradient. Then I can use the fact that the length of the line is 125, uh, the root of 125. So I can say here that the magnitude of AB is 125, and I can use the length formula here. So I know the length formula is based upon Pythagoras' theorem. And if I want to find the length between two points A and B, I know that it's equal to the square root of the difference between the X coordinates, so XA minus XB squared, plus the difference between the Y coordinates, which is YA minus YB squared. Again, it doesn't matter if I put xb minus xa or yb minus ya. It doesn't matter <coughs> at all in this case. Now, so I know that the square root of 125 is equal to the square root of, so I'm going to do xa minus xb, which is a minus 3, all squared, plus, and xb minus, uh, yb minus, ya minus yb, which is 2 minus b, all squared. Okay, so I have here another equation I can form. Now, if I square both sides to get rid of the square root, I'll say 125 is equal to, and I've got this, a minus 3 squared plus 2 minus b squared. Now, I want to solve these two equations simultaneously. Right? Before I start expanding, what I can do is, I can take equation 1 and substitute it into equation 2. All right, so I know B is 8 minus 2A, and I have here B. All right, so this is how you solve simultaneously. So I know that B is 8 minus 2A, and here I have a B. So if I replace the B with 8 minus 2A, I will have substituted this equation into that equation, and I will have eliminated the B from the equation, and I have something with just A in it. So I have 125 equals A minus 3 squared plus 2 times minus and i'm going to have here i'll put instead of 
<clears throat> instead of b, I'll put a minus 2a. And that has to be squared as well. So let me just simplify this a little bit before I start expanding. So I have 8, a minus 3 squared, plus this is 2 minus 8, which is negative 6, plus 2a. So I have 2a minus 6 squared. Because when I expand this, I have negative 8 and plus 2a. So 2 minus 8 is negative 6 and plus 2a. So now this is an equation with only a in it. And if I expand the brackets and simplify, I should be able to get my values of a. So I have a squared minus 6a. And then I'm going to square that. So it's plus 9. Because when you square this bracket, a squared minus 6a plus 9. And I square this bracket, square the first term, 4a squared multiply these together that's negative 12a double that that's minus 24a and then square the last term that's going to be plus 36. so simplifying all of this you have 125 is equal to a squared plus 4a squared that's 5a squared negative 6a minus 24a that's minus 30a 9 plus 36 is 45. so now we got um, if we bring everything onto one side, I've got 5a squared minus 30a plus 45 minus 125 equals 0. So 5a squared <coughs> minus 30a. And now when I simplify that, it gives me negative 80 equals 0. Now all of these terms are divisible by 5. That will make it easy for us to solve this problem. So I'm going to... Divide every term by 5. <clears throat> that will give me a squared minus 6a minus, that's 18, right? That's 18. 80 divided by 5. 5 goes into 8. One time, yes. Okay, now we're going to solve this quadratic equation. Does it factorize? We have to find two numbers multiplied to give me 18. Is it 18 or 16? It's 16, sorry. My bad. 80 divided by 5 is 16. Okay, 16 times 5 is 30. Yeah, 80. Okay, so it's 16. So two numbers multiplied to give me 16, and when I add them, I get 8, and they have different signs. So one is positive and one is negative. It's 8 and 2, right? It's going to be negative 8 and plus 2. So A is equal to negative 2, and B is equal to, and A is equal to 8. Those are the two solutions because we know <coughs> that we have the zero product property here. If two numbers, two factors multiplied to give you zero, one of them must be zero. So either a plus 2 is zero, in which case a is negative 2, or a minus 8 is zero, in which case a is positive 8. Okay, so now we haven't finished yet because we have to find the values of a and b. Now I know b is 8 minus 2a, so I have b equals 8 minus 2a. So we can say when a is equal to negative 2, b is equal to 8 minus 2 times negative 2, which is equal to 8 plus 4, which is 12. So we can say a equals negative 2 and b equals 12. That's one pair of solutions. Okay, you should put the pairs of solutions together. Okay, and then when, when a equals 8, b equals 8 minus 2 times 8, which is 8 minus 16, which is negative 8. So when a equals 8, b equals negative 8. Okay, and there's there are our two pairs of solutions here. Okay, so if we wanted to check our answers, we could check to see, you know, we could basically, if you wanted to, we have, you know, we can check different values of a when a is 8 and b is negative 8. Does it give us a gradient of 2? Is the distance between them root 125? We can check. Okay? If you wanted to check, you can check. And when a is t minus 2 and b is 12, put negative 2 and 12 here, you can check. Does the gradient give us 2? And is the, is the length also root 125? And you can check to make sure that you've got the right answers. Okay? So that's something you could do if you wanted to, to make sure. Okay, so that's how we answer this question. We use the two pieces of information they gave us to form a pair of simultaneous equations. Now, one of the one of the equations we get is linear. The other one is this quadratic type of equation. 
and we have to substitute one of them into the other. That's why I don't like this statement, um, equate the two equations. No, we don't want to equate the two equations because that doesn't make sense. Uh, you can make B the subject of this, it's going to be very difficult. So if you, if you want to make B the subject, then equate them, okay. But what we do when we're solving simultaneously is we are substituting one equation into the other. So where B is in this equation, I'm substituting instead of it, 8 minus 2A. And of course, that's a sensible thing to do, to substitute the linear equation into the quadratic. And then <clears throat> we can then eliminate that. Thereby, we eliminated the B from our equation. And then we solved it. Okay, We could have made A the subject here, but then we would have to deal with fractions, which is more complicated. So it's much better to put B as 8 minus 2A and then solve. Okay, so that's the answer to this question. Um, it's just based on your understanding of straight line graphs and how to find the gradient and how to find the length between two lines and also how to solve algebraically simultaneous equations involving straight line or linear and quadratic types. Okay, so that's the answer to question number seven. I hope that was clear. Other questions from this particular paper, this June 2014 uh, Cambridge paper can be found in the playlist that will appear over here. This is for P1. Other questions from the topic of, uh, from this end of topic worksheet of um, straight line graphs that I have can be found in the playlist over here. Other questions from straight line graphs <clears throat> of Cambridge in general can be found in the playlist over here where I collect all the questions from, from the textbook and from end of topic worksheets, from past papers, whatever. Um, that will be found in the playlist over here and uh, you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link and you can watch the video the card for which has shown during the video during this video how to use my channel to find what you're looking for whether you're doing Cambridge or Edexcel whether you're doing IGCSE or A, A level you can find the material quickly that you need by watching that video it tells you how to access my material in an efficient manner thank you for watching and see you soon.